Hey there everybody, this is the race engineer. Welcome to part 3 of the McPherson suspension design. Today we're going to model the lower arm of the suspension. The modeling process is very easy in this case. If you remember in part 1 I told you that we have some design requirements so we choose according to that and dimension our lower arm. So we start off with the 2D sketch we have all our dimensions in place the two points for the connections to the chassis and the one point for the ball joint that connects to the spindle slash knuckle slash hub carrier whatever you want to call it we extrude the sketch up to the height we are required to then we cut extrude for the hole through which the bolt is going to connect with the chassis i am also going to cut extrude a portion of the lower section of this arm to reduce the weight. We can do this by choosing any profile according to our design. For example, in this case, I have chosen this one. Then I added the hole for the second position on the chassis. Add some fillets as you like. Then cut a hole at the point where the ball joint is going to be installed. Then I just add simple extrude feature at the bottom of this ball joint to accommodate the different components that I will show you soon like this here then to add extra support I added some ribs on this feature which is a result of an finite element analysis simulation of this lower arm based on the uh, weight that is on one wheel according to the quarter uh, model approach of the suspension and that's it you have your lower arm designed this doesn't need to be a heavy component because it is not loaded to exert any sort of bending only this arm and the other arm are subject to mainly tension and compression during braking and traction of the wheel the modeling of the ball joint is very simple as well as I'll show you the section view of this component right here the ball joint contains the ball element itself and the housing for it this part is the rubber seal that avoids any sort of contamination of this ball joint. After mating this whole subassembly of the ball joint into the lower arm at the point where they, it will connect with the spindle, we add the knuckle assembly which contains the brake disc, the knuckle or the spindle itself and the axle. And then at these two points we connect the damper assembly. The whole reason to show all these three components together was to give you an idea of how these are arranged. If you look at the right view of this whole assembly, we see that the damper is slightly turned inwards, which is actually the caster angle. And similarly from the front, we see that it is inclined a little bit inwards, which is the camber angle. The axis which joins the upper mounting point to the ball joint is called the steering axis of the McPherson suspension. It is very important to align this ball joint with the steering axis. In the next video, we're going to model the entire knuckle assembly. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.